Hey songwriters, welcome back to the studio and in today's video I'm going to be showing you five production hacks for you garage band producers out there. We're going to talk about some really cool stuff like how to tailor make a drum performance. How to add a ton of flavor to your chords with one to two moves. And it creates this kind of happy sound to this, ooh, this kind of seventh jazzy, almost odd, but really cool feel. And how to write vocal melodies that really fit the arrangement of your song. And you can accomplish nearly all of the hacks I'm gonna share in this video in one to two clicks. So without wasting your time, let's dive in. All right, so we're here inside of this project that I am working on, and I wanna show you five tips, five things that you can do to enhance your GarageBand production. So number one, everything started with this bass line right here. So I played out this bass line, and then the first step was to add some drums. So I went ahead and added a session drummer, an automatic drummer that you can use by simply adding a new track and clicking here. And then I chose Aiden, who's an indie pop drummer. I just wanted something that was a little bit different because I knew the sound of the song was different. I didn't want something quite as straightforward. So this is the stock beat that I was initially given to go along with my bass line. Which I thought, hey, that's actually quite good. I mean, for a first guess, that was really, really good. But here's where the hack comes in. I knew this drum performance could fit a little bit tighter with my bass performance because some of the kicks and snares didn't quite line up with the rhythm of the bass. And so I used a little tool down here called follow. So if you click follow, you can actually have your drummer follow the rhythm of really any of your instruments. If you click here, you can choose anything, but I knew the bass line was kind of the main riff of the song, and so I chose to follow that bass line, and now I want you to listen to his rhythm and how it lines up almost perfectly with this bass line. So good. So every kick and every snare is falling in line with the rhythm of the bass. So at this point, I was really pleased. I was like, man, with a couple of clicks, I have a great groove to go along with this bass line. All right, so tip number two is how to spice up a very normal or boring chord progression. And so I knew that I wanted some kind of electric keyboard. So I chose this keyboard here, and I'm gonna play the progression and then talk about what I did to spice things up. All right, so what I did here is I played pretty normal chords, but I actually took one note from each chord and moved it around a little bit. So let me pull up the keyboard so that you can see what I'm doing. So the first chord is just a straightforward A minor. I actually didn't change anything about it because I wanted that minory feel. The next chord is a C, but what I did was I moved one note down a half step and it creates this kind of happy sound to this, ooh, this kind of seventh jazzy, almost odd, but really cool feel. And then I did the same. I have an F after that, and I took this note and moved it to make it a seventh as well. And then the same, it should have been an E minor for the last one, but I made it an E major. All right, so here's the tip in it. Number one, take one note within your chord and move it around. You can even play the normal chord and then come in here in the editor and start moving things around just to see what it sounds like. Or tip number two within this, if you want to build seventh chords but you don't know any music theory, here's how you do it. So if I have a normal C chord here and I wanna make it a seventh chord, give it kind of a jazzy feel, then I would take my root note and move it down one half step or one key. And now we have, so we went from 
normal to a seventh, which has a really cool sound. And I could do the same thing with my F chord. I have normal F, I take my root note, go down a half step, and now it has that seventh feel to it. And this goes for anything. It could be different chord shapes. It could be a D major. If I move this root note down half, now you have that kind of jazzy seventh feel. And now this isn't gonna work for every chord and I don't use that in every chord. But the point is, see if you can move one note within your chord and start to create something that's really dynamic and that has a very unique feel just as opposed to kind of these straight chords that we're used to. If you can spice it up with just one note, Ah, that can just really, really work. So lastly, in this intro, I used to have this kind of sampled vocal. Let me play it for you. And even though that could be its own tip in and of itself, what I am doing here is using a plugin called the Vocal Transformer. So I had two videos on it. One simply how to use the Vocal Transformer, and then another one is how to do the technique that I used here, which is how to turn your voice into a violin. Even though it doesn't sound like a violin, it just sounds like this kind of sampled chipmunkish violinish sound, which I really, really like. So check out the links in the description and we're gonna move on. All right, so at this point, we have the foundation of our arrangement already there. It's ready to go, it's sounding good, and now it's time to start adding some vocals, right? So let me play a few parts of this song, and I want you to listen to the vocals and see if you notice anything kind of odd. I feel it waking up. the chorus so did you notice that I'm not really saying anything <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of English going on right there. And so this is my big tip for you as a vocal producer, as someone who's writing vocal melody lines, rhythms, is don't get stuck on having to have every word, every lyric before you write vocals. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually listening to the arrangement, because it was there first, and I'm going what vocal melodies and then what vocal cadence or rhythm fits with this arrangement. So here in the chorus, I could hear this clear and distinct melody and rhythm. <laughs> It's like, okay, that fits. I feel like that's what I want. That's the feeling, that's the melody and the rhythm that I want. But I still have to go back and add lyrics. So a lot of times I will actually have a theme in mind or a phrase in mind or a journal entry or a Bible passage in mind that I'm writing from. So I know really what I'm trying to say at the end of the day, but I'll start off by writing the vocal melody just with not a whole lot of words. So what I'm not saying by using this technique is that lyrics aren't important. No, quite the contrary. Lyrics are very, very important. And as this song progresses, I actually will spend a lot of time on every word, on every phrase going, does it say what I want it to say? Does it, is, does it convey the meaning and the message that I want to convey? But this is just the way that I write vocal melodies and rhythm. All right, so the fourth tip that I wanna give you is how to add dynamics to your drum performance by simply using a few clicks. So going from the verse to the chorus, I didn't really want the groove to change, but I wanted to add dynamic. And so here's what I did. Number one, if you look here at the dynamics adjuster, you can see it's right here, just above the middle. But if I go to the chorus, you can see I've shoved that up a little bit. And so I wanna have you listen to just the drums and you can hear the difference of intensity between the verse and the chorus. So let's play part of the verse. So you get that feel. So you can tell the snare is cracking a little bit harder. Everything's just being driven a little bit harder, which makes me feel like, oh, I'm in a chorus now, as opposed to just having the same drum beat go throughout your entire song. So one more thing that I did is going from the verse 
to the chorus, you can see that this tambourine appears. So it's not in the verse, but it appears in the chorus. And all you have to do is click on it. And I have it in the middle. I didn't even go all the way with it. And it's just adding a little bit of energy and dynamic behind the drum kit. So again, here's the verse. And then the chorus. So can you hear that tambourine back there? It's very light, but again, it helps your brain differentiate between a verse and a chorus. So if I bring that into context, there's a lot of similar elements here between this keyboard and the bass line and the drum kit, but we're just adding dynamics when we get to the chorus. So here's the verse. And then we move into the chorus. So again, it's really two clicks, but it adds a lot of dynamic to the drum performance. And you can even take this way up. I could have gone all the way up and you can see it adjusts it even more, but it's really up to your taste. I just wanna show you a couple quick moves you can do to increase the dynamic range of your drum performance. So our fifth and final tip here is about creating totally unique sounds that will fit within your song. These are gonna be sounds that you come up with and you experiment on and they just have this totally unique sound they've never been heard anywhere else before and they can add just this really unique and cool layer and so here's what i did i want to solo out this guitar part right here and let you hear it by itself it's like whoa like by itself like what is going on with that but if you start to bring it into context with the other guitar just adds this really cool, really unique element and layer to it. And so what I did here was I knew I wanted some kind of odd guitar sound in the back. And so what I did was I actually took that same chipmunk technique and I played my guitar through a vocal track with the vocal transformer on it. So tons of reverb, got the vocal transformer on, even have the, the uh, auto tune turned on. And so it just created this really unique sound, but it goes with the feel of this song, which is kind of like this jazzy, dark, but also kind of odd uh, sound. So if I bring it into context. So you can hear it. It's not like it's standing out and jumping at you and getting in your face, but it definitely adds this unique layer. If we take it out, it's almost as if everything is kind of clean and orderly. Which definitely sounds good, but I think this extra layer adds something really unique. So my point with this whole illustration is see if you can create one layer or maybe more that's completely unique to you and add it into your song in a way that it becomes this really nice texture that kind of glues things together. Now I will say with this, don't make something that's just kind of really so odd or so in your face it's actually distracting. <laughs> Where you listen you're like, what in the world was that? So how do you come up with these sounds? Well. You can go with what you're hearing in your head. Do you hear any unique sounds in your head? And then it's just a game of experimentation. There's no real formula for this. It's just experimenting with different vocal sounds or guitar sounds or even your MIDI instruments or loops and seeing if you can make them your own in a way that fits with the dynamic of your song. So that is all for today's tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed some of these tips and techniques. Be sure to check out my free GarageBand mini course. It's a five video course helping you get up to speed on GarageBand. And then beyond that, if you wanna go deeper into GarageBand, I have a full GarageBand masterclass, which you can take. You're paying less than a dollar a video for that course, and I'm really proud of it. And it's been able to help more than 3,000 people learn GarageBand. So be sure to check out those links in the description. And I will catch you in the next video.